Hey everybody, welcome back to the next episode of the Balanced Vibes podcast. My name is Kirsten and today we're talking about how to build muscle. I'm going to give you several different ways how you can do it and some of them even when you don't have too heavy weights. So probably you have heard me say this many many times already that it is important to build muscle and it's not only because it looks good, it makes you look, you know, it gives you those nice curves, Yes, that's true, but it's not important for that reason alone. Muscle is also a very healthy tissue to have. So muscle is your tissue of longevity and health and vitality. And the more you can build, the better off you are. And honestly, the earlier you start, the better off you are too. And this is one of the regrets that I personally have You know, throughout my early 20s until almost the end of my 20s, I did only cardio training. And then I did a little bit of HIIT training. And it was all still very like calorie burning focused. And it wasn't until later that I started picking up weights and the benefits started coming really quickly. And all I wish is that I had started before, but there's no regrets. It is what it is. And now all we can do is just get to work with what we have and put on some muscle, increase the muscle mass. And I want to say that those who started lifting earlier are really lucky because they made a good decision. They're smart. Okay. Not only lucky, but they were smart when they did it because muscle memory is a real thing. So now when somebody who has been lifting regularly since they were maybe 16 or 18, they actually don't have to do all that much to maintain that muscle mass that they have once already built. So it becomes easier. But if you are not lifting right now, if you're not doing bodyweight training even, then it's not too late and we should still all do some strength training. And especially important for women because as we age, our ability to build muscle uh, goes down a little bit. And of course, later with menopause, we're starting to do some bone density. So it is extremely important that we also strengthen our bodies because your muscle attaches to your bones. So now when you strengthen your muscles, you also also strengthen your bones. So this is one of the big health reasons why strength training really matters. And the other thing is, of course, hormonal health. Strength training can be very, very helpful for your hormonal health, uh, help you balance out your estrogen and progesterone. And again, actually coming back to your bone health too. We have estrogen receptors in our bones, so we want to have a good amount of estrogen, the right amount of estrogen in our bodies to be able to build bone. And there are so many other um, benefits of having plenty of muscle too. One of them, of course, is insulin sensitivity. So the more muscle we have in our body, the better, the more sensitive we are to insulin and the better the body burns calories and burns through the glucose. So there are just so many, so many benefits. And of course, what most people think about is, oh, it's going to make me look good. And yes, it's absolutely true as well. It is going to make us look good. It's not going to make us look big and bulky and look like a man and I hope that most you know that everybody understands that that now what it actually does it helps us to build those curves that most women want although when they say that they want to lose weight they don't always realize that they actually want to have a leaner body and a little bit more muscle on the body because that's something that makes us look really good So like I said, plenty of reasons to want to build muscle. So now how do you do it? And I want to give you today eight ways how you can build muscle using something that is called progressive overload. So a couple of episodes back, I mentioned progressive overload and why it is important. But just to recap what it means, progressive overload means doing a little bit more, doing a little bit better over time. And it can happen in, in many different ways. You can be increasing your weights or you can be increasing your reps. And actually, these are the exact things that we're going to to talk about today because there are many ways to do project progressive overload. I, for some reason, I can't say the word today. Um, but progressive overload is important because we want to give our body a new stimulus. So if we train the exact same way all the time, every single day, a week after week, month after month, and year after year, then the body stops responding. It doesn't grow muscle anymore because it's doing the same thing. It's adapting, right? It's literally adaptation. And that's why we have to vary some things. We have to change the reps or the weights or a couple of other 
other things to be able to still see muscle growth. And I know that last year in 2020 and in some places still now, 2021, access to gyms can be limited. So there are options, there are ways how you can still achieve um, progressive overload, even if you don't have access to weights. But let's now go over the eight ways how you can start building muscle. And the first thing is, like I mentioned, and this is what everybody knows first, is increasing the weight. So let's now say that you do have a nice home gym that has a lot of equipment, different weights, all kinds of things, or you have access to the gym where you have a barbell and the options there or the weights you can put on that barbell, it's basically limitless. So this is a very simple way, a number one way how you can increase um, your uh, the, the amount that you're lifting and therefore applying the progressive overload principle. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you are squatting with 105 pounds and this is what you're doing right now. So you just started maybe uh, lifting with that weight and so maybe next month you should try to add 10 pounds or maybe even five pounds. Can you now squat the same number of reps with a little bit heavier weight? If you can, then you have accomplished progressive overload. Maybe three months from now, you can add another 10 pounds. And of course, this progress is not gonna be forever and ever because otherwise we would never hit the wall or we would never like stop increasing our weights of course this is not realistic but this is where uh, programming comes in and programming basically means uh, doing different rep ranges and doing different number of sets uh, in different parts of your workout program so your workout program has to be solid so you can't of course go from lifting 105 to lifting 700 this is just not going to happen there are limits so um but this is the first way how you can still see can i progressively overload what can i do and this is where you can where you start really seeing great results and i can guarantee you this is the case so let me give you an example uh, all 2020 i had pretty great muscle gains because i had good heavy dumbbells at home. They both went up to 52 pounds and I used them and I did all my workouts like that. And then early 2021, we moved to Phoenix, Arizona, and I was able to go to the gym because the gyms were open here. And in just a few months after I started using the heavier weights at the gym, because I mean, deadlifts with 110 pounds, for me, it is light. That's what I was able to do with my dumbbells, although this was hard for me when I first started. But now I was at the gym and I was able to do, you know, 160 pounds, 170 pounds, 185 pounds. And I have increased the weight that I'm lifting and the muscle mass, uh, the muscle that I put on is, is nice, it's good. And it definitely works. So the first thing is lifting heavier. We, we just covered that. So now let's, uh, Let's discuss a couple of options, what you can do if you cannot lift heavy, if you don't have a nice home um, gym set up or if you don't have access to the gym. The second way how you can uh, do progressive overload is do higher repetitions. So let's go back to that example where um, you had maybe uh, 52 pounds of you know dumbbells and then you did deadlifts with them and then you did six reps and it was ooh, really hard, okay? It was hard, but you got three reps, awesome. So now maybe two weeks from now, can you maybe do eight repetitions, okay? And maybe two months from now, can you maybe do 10 repetitions? So push yourself a little bit and see, can you do higher reps? Because this is another way to do progressive overload and your body will respond. You have to work harder, you have to for work longer, right? So it, it does make sense, hopefully. So this was your second way of doing um, uh, progressive overload. And by the way, all kinds of reps will build muscle. Of course, the more traditional uh, rep range generally tends to be between 10 to 12, maybe eight to 12. Yes, but if you don't have heavier weights, there's nothing wrong in going like 15 or 20 reps because these ranges also build muscle if you just challenge your body enough. All right, let's move on to the third way how you can do progressive overload, and that is slowing down. And this is what I mentioned in one of the earlier podcasts too, I think it was two podcasts ago when I talked about it, 
So how do you uh, slow down? So you want to slow down the lowering portion of your lift. So for example, let's talk about squats and let's talk about bicep curls. So the lowering portion of your squat is where you bend your knees and you try to get your butt to the floor, okay? So this is your lowering phase. And now when you do it with, let's say, two dumbbells that are have gotten a little bit light for you, then you do the squat and the lowering portion so that you count to let's see, four to five as you're lowering your butt down. So you go down one, two, three, four, and then you go up at one, okay? So what that does, it increases the time under tension. So you're spending more time under tension. And the other example was the biceps curl. So let's now say that you, you're using the dumbbells for your biceps curl. Now the lowering portion, you can again count to four or five. One, two, three, four, maybe five, and then you bend your elbows again, bring the weights up. So that also increases the time under tension. Of course, your muscles are working a lot harder versus you doing just one, two, one, two, one, two, the reps, right? And just today, I talked to one of my clients and she said she she just used this principle and she said, I definitely felt it. I definitely uh, felt that time under tension and it did make my workout harder. All right, the next way you can do progressive overload is to do higher volume. So let me give you an example. For example, you are doing always three rounds of 10 push-ups and 10 squats and 10 bench presses and 10 deadlifts or whatever it is, but you're doing three rounds. So how can you now do higher volume? You're gonna do four rounds or maybe you're gonna do five rounds. And yes, it may take you, it will take you a little bit more time, but if you feel like your workouts are not challenging and you're not getting the results you want, then you may have to increase your volume and get out of your comfort zone. So get out of that three uh, round range and start uh, doing four or maybe even five. It's going to make you a little bit more fatigued. It's going to make your um, challenge your muscle a bit more and you're more likely to get the results. The next way to do progressive overload is to do higher frequency. So you're doing your workouts more frequently. And before I even start talking about it, I want to say a big caveat here. If you're somebody who tends to overtrain, and I know there are some of you in here, um, then you have to be really careful with it. So higher frequency means that sometimes you're gonna do maybe two workouts a day, which I generally do not recommend. Generally, I do not recommend that. But if the workout is very quick, it's short, then it may help you. So let's say that you take 15 minutes in the morning and then 15 minutes in the evening and do a a strength circuit okay so let's say that your plan is to work on your upper or on your back muscles so you're gonna do some rows you're gonna do some reverse flies maybe do some cobras maybe do some supermans and you're gonna finish at 15 minutes and then later you do the same thing again but i don't want you to go to the gym and do the full thing and you know stay for one and a half hours and then think that you have to do the same thing again in the afternoon because that's going to be super counterproductive to what we're trying to accomplish you're just going to get really exhausted your central nervous system is trying is is on fire all the time you're trying to recover all the time your body's never rested this is not what we want so be careful with that but it can be a great option for somebody who is maybe maybe a mom or maybe has to use the time when the kids are napping um, to use that 15 minutes now and then use the 15 minutes later in the day to that way to progressive overload because normally you would do just one workout today but i just want to say like i already mentioned be careful with that don't push yourself and be really strict with yourself if you know that you have the tendency to overtrain then really timer for 15 minutes boom done right and then go 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 back to it later and do it again Okay, um, another way how you can uh, do progressive overload is to increase your range of motion. And I really actually love this one. So what does it mean to increase your range of motion? So let me give you an example, and it's gonna be squats again, because everybody should be doing squats, the most foundational movement ever. So let's say that you're squatting with a barbell or dumbbells or body weight, but you're only bending your knees to 90 degrees, okay? So when you look yourself from the side, you see that your thighs are parallel to the floor. Now, can you get your butt closer to the floor? So now if you are only bending your knees to 90 degrees, then you're not using as much muscle as you would if you get your butt to the ground, right? That's your, that is going to be your goal now. So you're going to go through a bigger range of motion, which is gonna then 
use more muscle, challenge more muscle, and this is where your strength gains come from. Coming back to the squat example, so you're gonna start up nice and tall, standing up, and then you're gonna lower your butt down as close to the floor as possible. And if you really feel like you cannot get any lower, then there can be some issues that are go that could be going on. Maybe it's your ankle mobility that's holding you back. Maybe it's your hip mobility that's holding you back. Maybe your quads are really tight. So it's important that to figure out that root cause, why you cannot squat any lower, because you should be able to get a lot lower. So increasing your range of motion is another way how you can really um, use the progressive overload. And you're going to be amazed by how much this helps you once you get past your mobility mobility issues and are able to squat lower or do whatever the, the movement is that you're working on, going through just bigger range of motion. And the last tip that I have for you, how you can do a, um, progressive overload is to do some exercise with unilateral training. So unilateral means that you're only using one leg or one arm. So for example, single leg squats. Can you, can anybody tell me that these are not super, super hard? No, everybody says that they are really hard. So get to work and try, can I do a single leg squat? And you probably, if you've never tried it before, you probably are not able to do it. So start from a bench, so sit down on a bench, then try to stand up on one leg only or one foot only, and then start lowering the bench. Next time you're gonna sit on something lower and then something lower until you may be able to do the squat from the floor. And that's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of time, trust me. And this is going to blow your quads up because this is really hard to do. Other things that you can do, for example, you can do single arm or single leg plank, where you are picking one hand off the floor and you're just staying on one hand and two feet, or you can be on your both uh, hands and then lift up one leg. To make things harder like that, single leg deadlifts is a really great exercise too, because the, the thing with unilateral training is now your body has to work out harder because the other side of your body is not doing anything. So now all the tension is that on one on that one side only. So this can be another way. And of course, the options here are not exactly endless or limitless. You can do single leg squats. You can do single leg deadlifts. You can try um, single arm push-ups, but generally they are really hard, at least in the beginning. So I recommend that you start with something higher, maybe your hand on a desk or, or a chair, something like that. You're gonna be amazed how difficult they really are. So these are some of the tips that you can try to make sure that you are getting some progressive overload because this is the key to increasing your muscle mass and getting stronger and also building a better physique. And of course, the other thing that I always mention is eating high protein. And I still got to remind you that my protein guide is still available, how much protein to eat and how it's going to help your muscle gains. It's all there. It's all in this one free um, guide. So make sure that you get it. It's called Pit Physique Formula. It's absolutely free and it's going to help you out big time. All right, this is it. That's all I got for you today. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if it was. And if you want me to cover any other topics, I wish you a wonderful week and I see you again very soon. Bye-bye.